losing time, I'm fading fast I just wanna make it last Try to let go of the past I close my eyes, embrace the blast Sleepless nights and headaches stack Restlessness to hell and back What's my purpose, what do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief There's something that'll have what you need what you need We're broken, it's tragic Hi everyone, today I wanted to try something different where I'm going to read my Facebook post that I had mentioned I wanted to make a video about and then but without uh, like <laughs> seeing me just having the audio because I just don't feel like doing my makeup today and I have some cleaning up to do and maybe laundry and dishes and things and haven't eaten yet today either and it's 10 a.m. So yeah, just a lot of things to do and I just don't feel like getting ready. But I think I'm going to try my best to go through this whole post and not pause or we'll see because like I said before that hasn't always been the best choice but this is just something I wrote when I was probably you know it was like sort of in the beginning stages of getting diagnosed with autism and just feeling a lot of joy like from like I felt like relief from getting diagnosed and with CPTSD autism ADHD and you know, OCD, depressive disorder, and anxiety, like having all of that at once felt really good. But there were times that I felt angry and where I was living at the time, I was being like mistreated by people in the trailer park and it was just really ugly and I was just not in a good headspace when I rerouted my life from Manitoba and I came to this place and this beautiful place like this trailer park that's probably one of the most beautiful in all of Canada but the people some of the people there were just really ugly and bullies and I thought that being open about being autistic would be work in my favor like for people to understand why I was the way I was and or am the way I am and <clears throat> um it just turned out to not I don't know, I just, I just think, I'm sure autistic people can relate where it doesn't really matter what you tell some people, they're not going to try to, um, you know, and I'm disabled on multiple levels, like I, I'm autistic and CPTSD and then I have um, fibromyalgia, so I just thought all that would, letting people know that would just maybe maybe people would try to be a little kinder but that didn't happen but so when I wrote this post I was a bit angry about that and just having to see my mom every single day who you know like we just really needed to live separately and we finally got our own trailers and it's like I love my mom and I'm thankful for everything she's given me and but it's just that like no matter what she's done for me to me it just doesn't really feel like it makes up for 18 19 years of abuse and I mean like he died my dad died when he was when I was 28 years old and so any interaction I saw with him, which was very few from when I officially moved out at 19 to 28 years old, was still unpleasant. And, and you know, he would even say worse things at times. Like he said, I wish he wished I was never born and really hurtful things. But it does, it didn't feel like anything to me because it, I was like, yeah, I wish you were never born. <laughs> like, I mean for him to say that to me when I was just a kid who was frustrated with what was going on in the home and I never even put them them through hell I wasn't like out till three in the morning they're trying to find me I wasn't doing 
really horribly in school. I was like the vice president and I went to college and even still like despite my best efforts and working at a young age and babysitting at a young age and no matter what I did it was just never enough to them and <clears throat> so for him to say hurtful things like that it was just kind of like yeah well when I was really young I wish you would drop dead because you were abusive and so many levels like I know that's really ugly to wish that but <coughs> you only get to that point wishing that when things are really not right and I mean that maybe that's not always true like some kids do have psychological problems that has nothing to do with what their parents were like but in my case I wasn't that was the only time and the only person that I was like really like just doing a lot of destructive things in and out of the home like the way he would interact with other people too like very abrasive and short and get ang frustrated angry or um easily and like for example when I was really young he was driving and someone was tailgating him and he and I know he was drinking this time he would drive he would drink and drive and I was in the back seat and he's like this is how you teach people not to tailgate you he slammed the brakes I'm in the back seat like he's so ugh. <sighs> there's a lot of stories and I'm six minutes in here and I said I wasn't gonna detour from this post I just kind of want to read it from beginning to end and allow people to kind of absorb each word and not elaborate. I'm going to try and then I guess if I have any comments or if I have, if people have questions or anything, you can always put it there. So, um, anyway, I just, it's October 9th, 2022. I'm going to write a book about growing up, nearly dying at birth, being autistic, ADHD, bullied relentlessly in and out of the home, got worse with age somehow. Brain lesions and symptoms that have been followed by neurologists to rule out MS and left with a fibromyalgia diagnosis by default. In brackets, fibromyalgia is said to be caused by childhood trauma. Some believe that or there's been studies. CPTSD, childhood abuse, a parent who was a victim of childhood abuse, but by not getting help, continued the cycle of abuse with al alcoholism, verbal, emotional, and physical abuse, chain smoking in the house, in the car, didn't matter if it was right in my face, gambling, adultery, incapable of caring for their kids or themselves, and various forms of sexual abuse. A parent who stood by, seemingly a victim, and carries narcissistic abusive patterns as survival of this holy matrimony or their own upbringing told me to get over it move on let go an endless amount of times the same parent who didn't reach out for support when I said I was suicidal as a teen used the other parents childhood abuse as an excuse for their behavior I had friends use me in so many ways I'm sh ashamed to say not a single one of them truly loved me I am unlovable I am the black sheep, the black dog, the black cat, the bad one. I've done so much good in my life, especially operating my home daycare for nearly four years. Had numerous families come back to me for up to two and a half years. Brought firstborn, second, and even third. So many great memories. It wasn't just the joy and happiness children bring. It was the strong need to protect them the way I wasn't. But at the end of the day, it seems it amounts to nothing. People see what they want to see, an unfriendly face, unfavorable reactions, low self-esteem and self-worth. <sighs> Sometimes they see a person doing their absolute best just to survive and it doesn't matter. To many, they have one look at you and think they know you who you are and your story. Fat, stupid, ungrateful, whiny, selfish, and so on. 
I had friends and family who knew what I was experiencing, not in great detail, and every single one turned a blind eye or stabbed me in the back. We don't speak of things that make us uncomfortable. It's too exhausting. Imagine being exhausted just by hearing what someone else had to live through. Being so self-absorbed and selfish you couldn't possibly even hear someone else's struggles. This Thanksgiving, I'm just thankful to be alive and I don't owe it to anyone but myself. I take it back. I do owe thanks to some of my friends' parents growing up who included me, didn't make me feel like a burden, taught me valuable lessons, showed me what good parenting looks like and how it impacts and helps raise successful, happy, confident children. Not that I'm... Not that everyone doesn't struggle in their own ways or have flaws, but I am thankful for them because they helped keep me alive and out of the line of fire. And, uh, so that was it, but I, um, there's comments I want to read as well that I included. I included a a family friend and I apologized to them and I said that I know that they were there for me at times and I know I do feel the love from them and like I'm sure some friends did love me but they not unconditionally no one has ever my problems have always just been too much it feels like for anybody to like You know, like, for an example, I had a friend who I was so close with for years and we barely ever had an argument. But if there was one single argument, they just cut me from their life like I was nothing. And when that happens to you, it just really eye opening. Like, I mean, that says more about them, like their inability to cope and move through problems and but I'm sure they have other people in their life they work through problems with but for me I was just trash that's what it felt like just completely disposable but anyway um and I will even mention a specific story one time like actually I'll just say it right now like the reason one of the fights that we had was um I was like you know, with my P- CPTSD, I didn't know that was the word at the time, but um, we were all like camping and we were out in the wilderness and um, and there was a bathroom nearby where we all were, but it wasn't that close. Like you kind of had to walk through some trees and stuff and it's dark and I'm in the middle of nowhere with not familiar and just s- feel stress going anywhere by myself in the woods at night whether it be coming across someone else or a bear or like whatever I was just asking my friend if she could come to the bathroom with me and she wouldn't she was talking to her future husband at the time (laughs) funny how that works and um but no like she wouldn't come and I don't know if I asked other people and they just weren't willing or what but I just got I felt like so hurt that like you can't just spend two minutes with me coming with me so I feel safe and I know we were drinking and whatever but it just says a lot like the same person just cutting me out of their life like we had one other blow up before and it's like we didn't talk for a year or something like that but anyway um so I went and on the way I did see a man like just kind of standing in the woods like looking at me and it was like great like my worst fear is like coming true but thankfully he didn't I don't remember if I just walked past him and kept going to the bathroom or what but or if he was probably just on his way there but either way it just made me feel really uneasy and then I came I just ended up going back to my tent and um or I my our tent I was sleeping with in the same tent with my friend and I was just so mad that she 
like she probably thinks or they probably think that I was like jealous or something that she was like talking to this guy or that's probably why or what was going on in their minds but it it had nothing to do with that it was just the sole fact that she couldn't do this one thing for me so when I got back and I had been drinking too I and I do regret this but I kind of just like took all her makeup and I just threw it around the <laughs> tent I I have never done anything like that before I'm not like a destructive person and I'm not someone who like r ruins things and breaks things and it was just kind of like just really angry like thinking that this friend I've had for so long just really doesn't it there's been many signs in the past like whether it be making fun of me and stuff or but to just never be there when I really need them like in that way I was just hurt and I threw these because in my head at the time I was thinking this person's such a superficial you know what, like, and I just threw all this shit around the room, like, you know, she cares more about her makeup than my friendship kind of thing, and so when she came back, she noticed all the, and gathered it up and slept somewhere else, but, um, the next day, like, they were all mad at me, and no one talked to me the whole ride home, and they even tried to pass me off into, like, some other car, and then we didn't talk again for years and years, but, that I just wanted to explain my side of things for that. And that's an, just one of many examples where I've just always felt like really unlovable. And, and there is another thing too, like since I'm on this topic and if anyone from my past does watch this specific video and they know exactly who I'm talking about with naming names, there was another friend who was friends with this friend when we reconnected a little while later. And she said, geez, you're a mooch. Like, this friend always, um, you know, would drive us places and whatever, but I always made sure to, like, spoil this friend in other ways to make up for it, because I didn't have a car. Like, I would, um, buy them their dinner or something or movie tickets and things like that to make up for it. And so when she just called me a mooch, like, I don't remember even why, like, what I did in that moment for that comment. But that's another thing I want people to know. Like, I didn't, like, if we're going somewhere and someone's driving all the time or whatever, like, maybe I wanted to borrow 10 bucks if we're going to the bar or something. I don't know what it was, but it's not like I wouldn't get it back to you or something <laughs> 10 bucks to go to the bar that was a lot back then <laughs> uh, anyway those are just kind of like little things that or big things but little now but they just stick with you you know but I'm gonna continue reading this so It said, the truth is too uncomfortable for many. Well, being comfortable didn't get us anywhere. It makes you dismissive, submissive, enabling, toxic, toxic positivity, gaslighting, and continues the cycle of abuse. Just a friendly reminder that somebody can be an amazing friend, coworker, and neighbor, and not be a good parent. They could bend over backwards for friends, work full-time, volunteer, and left with not being able to provide emotional, physical, intellectual needs of their children or themselves. They can praise and love one child and the other is the punching bag as well. They had so many people to care for. They didn't have enough. They didn't have enough for me at the end of the day to protect me and my needs. And I was the one that looked like a rotten bee by the time I was a teen. Is it still a surprise knowing what you now know? Not only am I aut autistic with sensory issues, needing extra support, everything overlooked and ignored, but I was abused and neglected. I wasn't the, it, I wasn't the only thing neglected. The home was dirty, mouse-infested, dusty, not a place for peace, relaxation, and protection. 
A child can only do so much and lead by example, yet everything was my fault. The reason I'm here today, where I'm living, who I've been living with, I didn't just walk out when I was younger and never look back. I was so beyond gaslit and manipulated my entire life. I would tell myself this could be worse. Things could be worse. I could be a starving child in Africa is something I would tell myself often. How horrible is that? I wonder where I heard that from. Always things could be worse. Things could be worse. Well, while being true, things can always be worse. I avoided and didn't get help for my mental health until I was 28 years old after a mental breakdown. After I met someone who had gone through similar things in their childhood and opened up to me a lot about what they went through. It reopened all my scars and memories and things I had suppressed and forgotten. All the things that made life so difficult were out in the open for the first time. I could finally acknowledge all the wrongs that had done to me, so I participated in programs. Programs that you are still pretty much the problem, and it's not about what was done to you, but what you can do to better yourself, which is incredibly empowering and helpful on one hand. But on the other, it's really messed up when you talk about all the abuse you survived, all the problems you face in day-to-day life, and the first solution is always to try to put you on medication. That's just another form of abusing the victim. I refuse. I don't need medication for being an autistic ADHD abused person. I need patience, understanding, and love that I never got. To anyone who finds this amusing or you go out of your way to look at my profile and see what I'm up to, if you're offended by anything I said, then you must be carrying guilt. Oversharing is a method of healing and hopefully I can help at least one person in the future. I have one million stories to tell, fact, not fiction, from elementary school to high school, in the workplace, college, moving to a different city to start over, only to come back months later after the death of my abuser. And things things improved. I felt some sense of freedom, but over time, the trauma, the pain got worse. Living... With the other parent, belittling, distrusting, gaslighting, accusing, blaming, reliving all those horrible experiences. By then, up to present day, I had no choice but to make things work. Otherwise, I was facing homelessness. Material things are nice, but it will never make up for 18 plus years of abuse I had to endure. It's my choice to be forgiving and I'm trying my best to move on and let go, but that's up to me and it's not for anyone to speculate on and try to force me to do. Since this person has helped me in some ways, I'll never be able to repay. This is for another ex-friend in the past. I had a so-called friend once tell me, suggesting that she knows people who have been through worse and turned out better. I said, ha ha, F you. What one person had... What one person was able to overcome doesn't mean the next can. The person might have had more support, more friends, more family, went to therapy at a young age. Maybe they had more people to talk to, listen, or understand what they went through. Maybe they're just all around a stronger person. You have no right to tell anybody, oh, because you know somebody who's been through worse, then you should be better. Meanwhile, you didn't even know the half of it. What a load of crap. People who use those kind of insults, judgments, victim shaming, blaming are clearly incapable of putting themselves in others' shoes and haven't been through real life trauma and most likely wouldn't be able to survive what we have. I know that's mean, but I just feel like that. Like when somebody is so quick to judge you and they say that, oh, they have other people in their life who are just better. Like, have you read a freaking book in your life? (laughs) Like... (laughs) This person was, like, somewhat of an intelligent person with, like, such disgusting views on the world and fat phobic. And, like, you know, I had struggled with my weight and I was talking about wanting to get fit again. And and she said something like, yeah, getting hot again or something. And I'm like, it was something to do with weight loss. And she's like, yeah, the same thing. Like, you're not hot if you're fat. Like, yeah, maybe I don't feel so hot when I'm fat, and but there's plenty of people out there who do are confident at any size and other people do find them attractive. So just really judging, really putting her um, 
own insecurities in my face. Like, you know how many people who are thin who have eating disorders or really abnormal, unhealthy ways, like, or relationships with food, it's always an eating disorder. Like, it's just really hard. Like, if somebody who is thin is using a drug or something, they're judged far less than a person like me who's overweight and just by abusing food. Like, maybe that's disgusting to you. Well, I'm not poisoning my body. And I'm not trying to say that in a judgmental way. Like, it does sound judgmental, but I'm just trying to say that it really sucks when we all know, like, the people who get bullied most on the internet are, like, fat people or or racist pieces of crap. But anyway, um, and by the way, like, I have met, made a friend out here who was, like, a really genuine person and, like, almost exactly what I need in life. Like, just really the opposite of me, like, more positive and, and stuff. But um, I just want to say that, like, even through all of this, I do continue to make relationships. And maybe one day I won't feel like so unlovable in the black sheep, but it's, I'm just trying to look through these posts and see if, um, there was anything else I was including a lot of um I was including a lot of like TikTok posts and things to um try to like anytime I see like something that's a little bit educational about CPTSD or autism I try to include it in something I've posted specifically. So if like people are reading something, if they want to click these links and like actually learn something. <sighs> anyway. I'll, like also I want to say I don't even. Like when I'm retelling a story. And it starts to like this kind of like. I start to feel angry or frustrated about what had happened in the past, but I do want to say it is important to say that I don't actually have like any hatred towards either or any of the people from my past really. Like maybe there is a few like really effed up things, but not, not any of the people that I shared a great deal of my life with, not really true friends that were there for me somehow, even if, you know, well, no one, it doesn't feel like ever anyone's really been there for me. It feels like even the friends I did have, they're kind of just more using me for company or when they would go shopping or, you know, I don't know. Yes and no, I know that's not true. Like when somebody brings you into their life and you're spending almost every day together and then you're like going to their cabin and things like that, like obviously this person was a huge friend of mine for years and but just how I said about one and we would like never have arguments and then if I ever there was a moment where I felt like I had to stand up for myself or something then I was just thrown away like trash but I still just, I don't have ill feelings towards any of my friends in the past. The only people in the past I have, like, really hard, um, is, like, really abusive people or, like, ex-actual, like, intimate relationships, things like that. Or, most recently, like, what had, what it was like at that other trailer park and some of the people there who were, like, just abusive and anyway I'm 
I want to end this video by saying that something I was telling myself is when I started to feel like a lot of stress in a moment, like I'm feeling overwhelmed and or I'm just feeling sad about the past or or say I'm feeling fearful, like I'm in my trailer and I've heard a noise outside and I think like, oh, that guy who threatened me last summer found me and he's coming to hurt me or something somewhat irrational, but not really. I just tell myself and I repeat it over and over and it does help me feel good. It's kind of like a, like somewhat of a, what do you call it? I don't know but anyway I just tell myself um, the past is in the past I'm safe now the past is in the past I'm safe now the past is in the past I'm safe now and I'll just like repeat that maybe for up to a minute in my head and it does bring some comfort like and hopefully maybe it can help someone else someday because like I said somehow I've managed to avoid medication I know in my videos that sometimes when I'm watching them back I'm like wow I seem really like lethargic and like I'm on something but like I'll put I will take any t test or polygraph test anyone wants <laughs> I cannot pay for that but I thankfully am not on drugs and I'm not on medication and some people will say you should try medication but right now I'm um I'm not at work and I'm not feeling all of those those really stressful moments that people face day in day out like I'm very lucky that I've had a break to work through things to get properly diagnosed and and the next part of my life is just kind of figuring out what job is right for me and to not get back into those type of environments that are really toxic and hurtful harmful for someone like me so the type of things I'm thinking of is like driving jobs, for example, where I'm like independent and I've had my license since I was young, but I only got my first car in my late twenties. But, um, I've only been in one small accident in all these years from being a teen to now. And I was like driving down, um, what street is that? Anyway, it's like a popular, well-known street in Winnipeg. I was driving down there and um, it was like the middle of winter and I was in my like little Toyota Echo <laughs> and I have like more than enough time to stop. Like this person did make a quick stop and they had their signal on, but I was a far distance back. Like I had more than enough room to stop, but it was just... I was like literally um, like sliding in slow motion. I was like putting on my brakes and I just wouldn't stop and <laughs> it really bothers me to this day because I'm like a cautious driver and I think I'm a good driver and then this happens. <laughs> I don't know why I'm ending the post with that. I said I was going to end it with this nice <laughs> quote that I say to myself but <laughs> how did I get on this topic? Oh, I'm just thinking of jobs that I want to do. But anyway, I'm like in slow motion and I hit this um, SUV like lightly. But my Toyota Echo just falls apart like a freaking toy. And there's, it almost like it didn't even have a scratch on it. And the ladies come out and they're like, did this happen right now? <laughs> like, it looked unbelievable. <laughs> like their bumper completely destroyed the front of my car and theirs looked like it had not even a dent and mine was like destroyed so thank god I didn't get in any actual serious collision in that car it must have been rebuilt from an accident or something because like how is that I don't know but anyway <laughs> I don't want a lawsuit from Toyota <laughs>
<laughs> it's not you, it's whoever fixed it, or I don't know, but <laughs> kind of scary. But, um, <laughs> I don't think actually any, like, my video is going to go far and wide and someone like that is going to come for me. It's just, I just say things like that. Like, if I say something, like, allegedly, or if I, when I was talking to a big pharma, I kind of wish I didn't say what I said about that. It was, like, kind of silly. I just, I guess I was just ranting and whatever was coming to mind I was saying. But, um... <laughs> Oh, anyway, so that's it for today, and yeah, thanks for listening, um, hopefully the message is getting through and it's not making me, like, just look like such a horrible person, and so I'm grateful for what I do have, and it's just, um, this is just real stuff, like, real things that people aren't. Like, people enjoy their documentaries and they, like, and TV shows and horror movies and stuff. But when it comes to, like, and that's all edited in some way to make it, like, really interesting. But when it comes to, like, just sitting down with one another and, like, hearing people out, it's... And I understand, too, like, some people are not equipped with that, like, especially at a young age. I can't hold any of my friends responsible for not maybe knowing the right thing to say or whatever. But it's more like actions speak louder than words. Like, there are a lot of hurtful things. No, that's not true. Actions and words. <laughs> but... Anyway, I'm starting to get just like, how do I end this? But okay, bye-bye. <laughs>